What's up, what's up? This is Jai here with another episode of Beer with Friends. Here's the crazy thing about this one, right? I decided to take for my birthday a nice little vacation home to go ahead and hang out with the parentals. Yes, these are the people you can't whisper in and say a statement because you're getting picked up. So if you let me finish this, you can talk about the pigeons outside the window as much as you like. Here we go. So... Before we get started, I want to introduce my two loveliest ladies. These are the women that are some of the most contributing factors in my life. They are the reason I'm as bold and beautiful as I could be. But uh, they also taught me about all the hard knocks and how things could be a lot worse. Um, but ultimately, they always have my back. They're always in my corner. I want to go ahead and give a round of applause for Mildred Centron T. Go ahead and say hello. Hello. Fantastic conversation. And then I got the other one, Kim Hoff. Hello, world. This is so exciting. I'm glad to be here. All right. So uh, stick with <laughs> us for this one. This is both their first podcast, but they are on their first podcast with me on beer with friends so to start this off we're going to talk about this dallas blonde it's a beautiful golden balanced session ale it's 5.2 percent alcohol by volume 23 ibu from deep ellum brewing company let's go ahead and pop that touchdown ah this is a great summer drinking beer. Comes straight here from the great state of Texas. You can use that chair right there. Pretty good. Yeah, and mm. uh, not too bad. I figured y'all didn't like the IPAs that mm. I normally drink. Not at no, all. Not no. At all. Okay. This one is loaded with citrusy and floral hops. Is that what it told you? That's what it says. What you, I'm going to check it out right now. What's your taste buds say? Hold on a second. Hold on. It's now. better than the IPA that we had a few earlier. Well, this is. Oh, I like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah, Dallas. I figured y'all might like it. I like it. Dallas Blondes. I dig it. It's good. I buy it. Love runs deep. Hmm. It does. And that's why we're here today. I want to go ahead and uh, just Not sit down and have this moment. It's been a long journey, and y'all been with me from day one. Well, I have definitely been there from day one. You know, so, and there's been a lot of shifts, changes, things, life's ups, downs, and everything else. Y'all both served in the military. You served this amazing country. You put your time in. Y'all left the military. Y'all went ahead and did some government jobs. Y'all are grinding. Y'all inspire me every single day. Please tell me, where they all begin? Where to begin for you, T? In the Bronx. In the Bronx? What'd you do in the Bronx? Survived. <laughs> it's half the battle. <laughs> it's half the battle. <laughs> no, I, I, when I was in the Bronx, I, um, growing up in the Bronx, I'm sorry, growing up in the Bronx, I realized that um, by the age of 10, uh, I needed to get the hell out of here <laughs> at some point. And, um, can, you, so can, you, can you give a little more on that? Because well, like it's it's hard to say came from the Bronx and at the age of ten I said I decided I should leave. What were some of the things that propelled you to that idea that you should leave? Hmm. Okay, that's that's good. I mean it's fair. Um, let's see. I used to I grew up in the South Bronx. It was it was rough, but at the same time, it was great because. You know, we had the whole family together and, um, you know, there's a joke that, seriously, <laughs> crunching popcorn. Yeah, this is a good story. <laughs> so <girl>. anyway, <clears throat> no, um, no, I mean, I always, I just knew that I wanted to do more. And I was one of those kids that uh, I wanted encyclopedias and I begged for encyclopedias. So one day my mother got us a set of encyclopedias and I read them. Like, uh, I wasn't athletic, and we weren't allowed to go out and play because, you know, my mother always thought that you're either going to get killed and, or something. And can you give me a little more about your background? I'm Puerto Rican. Oh. I'm a New Yorican. New Yorican from the that? Bronx. There's a joke that says, you know, what's the capital of Puerto Rico? They'll say New York, the Bronx. 
but it's not. It's not. Got you. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm working to what they call a New York, and then I just you know grew up in the Bronx, and I wanted to. After I read through all the encyclopedias, I knew that I did not want to stay in the Bronx. And I didn't mind hanging out in, in Manhattan, maybe. Yeah. But I was at ten. At ten, I knew hmm. that I needed to get out and, and can you, see the world. Can you give me a little time frame of when? Oh, all this- oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. So we're looking at the early nineteen seventy two. Right, early seventies. Okay, okay. So music was popping. You had, uh, and I had a, a lot of friends that were older, right? So, okay, you know, all my friends were who? My cousins. Yeah. That's, that's that's the way it was. And we were a big family, very large, and we all hung out together. But I saw, based on what I was seeing everybody else doing mm-hmm. and struggling, you know, I was a really perceptive child. I just didn't want to do that. By the time I was 14, I knew I needed to get out. I hear that. I'm curious, Kim, can you tell me a little bit uh, from your beginnings? Well, I was born in Baltimore. Okay. It's a typical metropolitan city. Typical? It's typical. Like, typical. It's... Segregated, you know. Oh, okay. That's you know, typical. This gotcha. side of the track, got people got a little bit of money. That mm-hmm. side of the track, people don't have money at all. So we was didn't have money at all. And then walked so, across the track? Not really. Oh, y'all used to go across the track. Come on, just no, to look at people's really. houses. <laughs> not really. Yeah, as you got older, when I was young, of course, you had to stay in the neighborhood. But as you got mm-hmm. older, and you start walking outside the neighborhood. You go four blocks to the to the west or the east or the north, four blocks over, and you got very, you know, elegant homes, big yards. And, and you wondered why. A whole different Oh, vibe. you knew why by then. At 10, 11, 12, you knew why. See what I'm saying? At you 10, know? you start getting this yeah. idea. It's like... It's like the hmm. self-awareness. Yeah, yeah you, you become aware. Why, why, is my, why is it like this for me? But not like this for everybody else, yeah. uh, unless it's within your family, yeah. within your nucleus. You know, my mom was a single parent. You know, by the time I came along. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and and how many of there were? were well, it ended up being five. I have two older brothers by one dad, me by one, my brother brother by another, and my sister by another. So, and anybody that needed a place to stay. Okay. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, that's was how that, it was. Was that your us. truth? Because that, that that's sounds like That's definitely my you're... truth. Whenever... Well, my mom was, you know, she was, you know, I would say she was a liberal woman. Um, she worked and went to school for nursing, you know, and but she tried bl- to keep her family together. Did Excuse she me? Did she blend in? What do you mean blend in? On both? Like... Yeah, because she was half white, so. Okay. You know, yeah, so she could go and get into those environments and they tolerated her, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. And that wasn't so much on your end. Y'all were just... Oh, no. My mom, blonde, green eyes, and very fair. So she looked like a white lady walking on the street. So she'd talk and cross and curse you out. <laughs> <laughs> In Puerto Rican style. Yeah. You yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fanny was a little bit more refined than that. Yeah. You know, Until she got drunk and then she cut your ass out. You know? she, did that in her, she did that in her own home, you know. So yeah. that wasn't something that was mm. like out there, you know. Yeah. Um, so she had two lives. She she definitely lived two different lives. You know, her work life and school life, and then her family life right. back in the row house in Baltimore. Yeah. Know? But she kept a roof over her head. I don't know how she did it. But, but that, did it. The, what I was trying to say is that your mom was one of those ladies that took care of your your, your her family, mm-hmm. her kids. Yeah. But also any child that was out there that was oh, stray yeah. that needed. We some had help. so many strays come to our home because my mom was a nurse, so. Anybody in the block get hurt, it, you know, ain't nobody going to the... Only way you went to the doctors is if you couldn't get up. Right? Or you about, yeah. you about yeah. to die, basically. You know, yeah, pretty much, you know. Yeah. And uh, so we always had people at our house on the couch getting patched up, staying for a day till they, yeah. you know. And the little kids, you know, um, they always went, knew when dinner time was and they would stroll over because their parents were going through stuff. Yeah, and you, you know? and you were the middle child. I was the middle child. And you... I'm the oldest. Of how many? We were four. Okay. Now it's three. My my brother George, who was adopted, um, passed away from cancer. Okay. Okay. So there's three of y'all left. And did y'all stay in New York the entire time? Or how'd that work out? Well, not entirely. Um, when I was 14, of course, I kept saying I wanted out of New York. But at the same time, I was also now entering high school. 
And I went to Roosevelt High School, which at the time was considered the um, the drugstore, the pharmacy of the Bronx in the high school. Yeah, it was really rough. And this in was fact, ni- 1978? No, I graduated in 79. So I'm looking at what? 76. Okay. So mm-hmm. right right in what was that, what else was happening in 76 in history in well, the US? We just finished Vietnam. We were bringing the boys home. Yeah, yeah we just finished Vietnam. Tricky Dicky got uh, arrested. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, every, hey, it was the liar. 70s, man. It was liar. awesome. Not a lie. Everything was beautiful. <laughs> Victory and peace. But this uh, is this is right before the drug e- epidemic that hit yeah. New York. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. but you know, we were all everything was. I mean, I was going down the stairs one time, and I I heard the noise. Of course, me being the curious person that I was. Now this is before I'm fourteen. Like again, about ten, eleven, mm-hmm. twelve, mm-hmm. and I looked under the stairs and um, <clears throat> in the building that we worked that I lived in, in the Bronx. I looked under the stairs. There's this guy with a needle sticking out of his arm, and he was shooting off heroin, and you could tell. I mean, I was young, but I could tell. I knew when somebody was dying. Yeah, I could look and say, "Well, he's yeah. dead, he, he's or gone. he's about to be dead." And it's like, "Son of a bitch, I got to get out of this place," yeah. you know. So, and so, that's why I woke up. So, would you consider your homes the hood? Oh yeah, my, my no, I wouldn't consider mine the hood. We had row houses and people lived in and yards, and the hood hood was. You know the projects. We considered the projects. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I, we I had didn't projects, live in the projects, and we didn't live in the projects. So a step above the hood. Just, yeah, yeah. Step above the hood. We had a neighborhood. Yeah. Got you. So yeah. this, this this wasn't Mediterranean Avenue. It might have been Vermont. Oh, oh Monopoly. Saint, Saint James. It certainly wasn't Park Avenue. That <laughs> <laughs> was Saint James. It was Saint, Saint James. James. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, Saint James. Go on, girl. Yeah. <laughs> go on, girl. Yeah. I don't Saint think James. I have. Oh, it's, it's it's always interesting because the, these are all different places where we start and we climb a ladder to a uh, our our agenda is to climb a ladder to a better place, a better yeah. situation for ourselves, our yeah. family, and everything else. Well, so to identify what that looks like on a monopoly board seems to be the yeah. most general understood way to explain it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but mm-hmm. you know, we got out of there, so so. All right, we're going to fast forward a little bit. I don't want to get too in detail. Y'all graduated high school. Believe I graduated, it or not, I graduated high school with a 69.7. I had missed 40 69.7? days. 69.7? <laughs> I sure did. Somebody was I had, nice. I had missed 40 days of school. You know, Ooh. it was crazy. And I was like, oh, I looked at my transcript not too long ago. Right back. I was like, how the hell did I even graduate? But nope, I went across the street and got my diploma. Good for and, you. And, um, you know, I was I played basketball, so I actually had yes. a couple of scholarships out of state, but I didn't go. And I don't even know how I got them. I think my godmother cooked something up. I had a, I had a scholarship to Ball State, and uh, I didn't. I was so poor, I was like, I, I, I don't even have enough money to buy but, clothes and stuff. But it was know. a scholarship. Yeah, but that's, that doesn't mean anything to people who ain't got no money. You know, nobody gotcha. can get you. got to get there. You know, you got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right, and take yeah, care of everything exactly. else that goes with yeah, it. Yeah, everything right. else. And then, of course, family issues. You know, my brother had left all his kids and they were at the house. And, you know, so I ended up working part time and going to school part time at the local college playing basketball or whatever. But it was just rough because I had to catch the bus, didn't have a car. And Baltimore has got four seasons. and. That winter season. And winter's a real winter. winter. Oh, yeah. Ain't It'll no joke. You. There's yeah. no joke standing on the corner, that wind right. whipping, waiting for the number nine bus to come so you can go to get off that bus and get on another that might not come because it's late and snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I did one year of that and trying to help my mom with the kids. And I yeah. said, no, this, this, ain't I, gonna I, work. this is not going to work. I'm just going to go in the low turn. Yeah. How, how about you, Ann? So uh, I was fairly ninth grade, uh-huh. big time. Um in, in Roosevelt, because like I said, you know, I started learning how to smoke. And smoke what? I, I learned how to smoke cigarettes, and then I learned how to smoke weed, which I realized I do not like. I don't what? like the eff- I don't like the effect. I just don't. You know, right. it's not for everybody. Not okay. For <laughs> so anyway, she was on her way to being that tip of Puerto Rico, New York. <laughs> All right. And but my mother realized, okay, you know, she is not going to lose her kids, or or mainly me. So she ripped us up, and we moved to Puerto Rico. So I spent my 10th grade in Puerto Rico. I started my 10th grade in Puerto Rico. I didn't know how to read or write in Spanish. 
barely spoke it because I spoke Spanglish, and um, which it is, was hard. Which is Spanish, English, English, Spanish. Mix-ish. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> and we had a real hard time. And we, we had, at least in, in New York, we had um, state assistance. Yeah. You know, we got food and stuff like that. But once we got to Puerto Rico, we had nothing. And I remember many, many days... Um, well, we had no food at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fight started. You know, it was really bad. There were plenty of wild chickens running around. You can't no, catch them. Not where we were at. They didn't have anything. So anyway, so I was going to school there. It was rough. But then there was this one teacher who said, uh, you will never graduate because you don't know shit. You don't know how to speak. You don't know how to write. You don't know how to do anything. So that motivated me to say, I'm going to learn. So I sat down with a Spanish-English dictionary, and I learned Spanish. And um, and then my mother from there, because we were starving there, we couldn't afford the place that we were living, as all of us in there. We went to this, moved to this other little town called Guanica, and we lived in a... Guanica. We lived, all six of us lived in a tiny wooden house with a tin roof, and it was all of us and the bats inside. All of y'all it and was the rough. bats. And the bat. The and cousins. that's where we were able to kill the chickens and eat <laughs> gotcha. fresh chickens. You thought <laughs> it was chicken. So yeah. did, did you graduate? In I Puerto- graduated from Guanica in Puerto Rico with a 3.9 average. Woo! Well, well, let me say something in my defense. <laughs> uh-huh. okay, go, go, so I go had on. a 69 points. But I was smart. I just didn't do the you, work. I just I would just come mm. and take the test and then leave the class. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. But I you was, were athletic. You were. I was athletic. You were an athlete. So yeah. yeah. And I, I was a bookworm. Well. I was good. I just didn't do the work. I was, I, like, I was like your son, you know. Ah, yeah. oh, well, well, you know, we'll, we'll talk about him later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got all the potential in the world, but, you know, just. Now, me, I didn't, have, I didn't have an athletic bone in my body. Still yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, but. I got the only trophy that I ever got in my entire life was for reading the most books in the library. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has oh to do God. it. Yes. Let's give a round of applause to that. Someone needs to. A little overdue, right? <laughs> Long overdue oh for your accolades. So, I, I read, I think, every damn Agatha Christie book ever written by Agatha Christie. Shout out to Agatha, oh my gosh, Agatha Christie. Yeah. Love them, yeah. love them. Uh, a, so 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 after graduation, mm-hmm. how long did it take you to get into the military? You said one year. It took me a of community year. college. Yeah, and uh, how- I went to community. I went back to New York, back okay. to the Bronx. I wanted to be a journalist, so I went to Lehman College in the Bronx. I stayed with my uncle, who was just recently retired, or I don't know what, had retired from the mil- from the Marines. And um, anyway, I went to live with them, and then I just. You know, college, I was. I went to college, and it was great. I loved going there, but I needed money. I yeah. needed a job. And I that was the money. same issue on yeah, your Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was I needed like, money. Yeah. I had to send money home. Mom still didn't have any choice. Just children. think, minimum wage back then was probably about $3 or $2. If that, about yeah. $2. So, yeah. 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 So I graduated. We gra- You graduated in 79? Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I graduated in 79, so that weird. No, I graduated in 80. I failed one year. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I prayed. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't know. Shit talk out. I didn't miss. I didn't. I didn't miss forty days that year. I missed the whole year. <laughs> See, I couldn't do that because I. I wanted to get the hell out there. <laughs> so, yeah. so I want. I want to know the specific moment when you're like, I'm doing the, the military. military. Oh, I can tell you. I want. I want to know that on your end, <laughs> and I want to know why you chose the branch you chose. Mm. Oh, wow. I knew the night I was standing on the bus stop in the middle of the night, waiting for the bus to come, and it was a full moon. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful, crispy fall night, and I was just waiting for the bus and waiting for the bus, and I I worked in a nursing home, Mm -hmm. and uh, it was a pretty bad night that night, and you know, because you got different levels on the um, nursing home, you know, you got Got people who who can fend for themselves a little bit, people who got to be restrained, and then people who are actually in hospice, and so... One of the our hospice ladies, who was really nice, she she took a turn for the worse, and and she was passing away. And you know, I was a nurse's aide, and I'm watching the um, the RNs um, trying to deal with her, and it's just something in me just broke. I was like, I don't want to do this. You don't want living, that as your, you know, 
Oh, before man. you even tried to live a life. Yeah, I said, I don't want to do this for a living. I just, it's so, for me, maybe because of my personality, it was just so emotional. People, mm. some people just cut it off and do what they got to do, you know. Yeah, yeah, she's gone, call her family, get them in here. Oh, my God, that's my RN. Get, yeah. yeah, get, yeah, so-and-so, get them in. Uh-huh, yeah, she ain't going to be around long. You know, and I'm in there. I knew this lady. I gave her ice chips. I, you know. You sat with I, her. Yeah, I sat with her. I, I changed the chucks. I, I mean, she was a person with a family who loved her and everything, and it just tore me up. Mm. And so that's what I knew. Yeah. Yeah. And and for you, it wasn't that emotional. Or oh. like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't. I'm sorry, you're not. I'm How you gonna laugh about it? How are you no, gonna laugh about it? Because when you hear when you hear my story. She had New York yeah. She she missed the L train. Yeah. And that was that was her motivation. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Mine was a little bit more different. All right, so it was summertime and mm-hmm. uh we were all hanging out in the street because that's what we did in, You and in the, the homies? Well no, in the Bronx it's like that. You everybody goes on the street, you bl- do a black party or you cut the hydrant on and you you know, could put a can in the front of the hydrant, everybody's playing around and whatnot. So I again told you that I don't like smoking weed because mm-hmm. it I just don't like the way it makes me feel. Feel like I anyway. So um I remember hanging out with all the, the 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 street folk, you know, teenagers and all that, and we just hanging out. And I had seen a commercial, "Be All That You Can Be," mm. and in the commercial, it showed all these different. And now it's an army commercial, and they show all these different things, right? So um, all these different occupations that people were doing and running through and all that, and that appealed to me at the moment, right? Anyway, so then I went outside. We're all drinking, and it, by, by now I'm 18 years old. So I this is drink. the bet night. Yeah. Go on, tell me more. <laughs> so, um, I told. I mean, all my friends were there, and then I was. Uh, I had a really close friend of mine named Cookie. Well, that wasn't his real name, and we used to call him Cookie Boy because we also knew a girl named Cookie. Uh, one of the girls who was my mm-hmm. girlfriend was uh, one of the gang members. Anyway. So we were all high, drunk, whatever. And I said, you know what? I saw this commercial and I like it. And I'm going to join the army. And one of the guys, the other guys, his name was Little Man. He said, you ain't joining shit. Come on now. And I said, I tell you what, if I don't join the army tomorrow, I'll sleep with all you motherfuckers. I'll sleep with all of y'all guys. And they were like, oh shit, bet, bet, bet. The next morning at six in the morning, I'm laying down and a cookie boy comes on the door and my mother had gone to work, and he bangs on the door, and I walk in, and I mean, I let him in, and he said, come on, get dressed, we got to go. I'm like, go where? Shit, what the hell? It's only 6.30 in the morning. And he said, oh, no, your ass is going to the recruiting office right now. I'm like, are you crazy? Why would I want to do that? And I didn't remember that I <laughs> you said, had, you if had. I don't join the <laughs> army, I'm going to sleep with all the guys in the in the, in the the gang, right? You know, in the, crew. Gang, in the crew right there, right? And he said, and I'm not going to let you do that. So that's how I ended up at the recruiting office around 9 o'clock that morning. And um, and I just enlisted. That's And wild. I tell you what, it was the absolute best thing I ever did with my life. I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. Um, if See, we... um, that's what I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's no, what no. I'm saying that mine wasn't that emotional. Mine was more uh, a, Immediate. I will survive <laughs> I knew it was a survival. It, it was Sorry, I survived the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Hmm. Just just to dive into the closet a little bit. Um. Did did y'all know before? About what? Well, of course, I everybody who's gay knows they're gay. Okay. That that's what I'm just, I'm just trying. <laughs> oh, did I know that I was gay then? Yeah. 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 Okay. That's so, why it so was such a big deal with act, the guys. See. See. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for opening that up. So, like, definitely going into the military, you set that up. But I didn't know that it was going to be so difficult for gays. Yeah. Well, that no I one, didn't I, know. No one knows what the military is until you well, it. You kind of know. You can't, because you got to remember, this is the 70s and the 80s. This is the early 80s. There is that. And so, you know, even in your right, community. Right, this was July 1980 you know, for me. Even, even in your community. And now, like, that was right during Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Yeah. Well, no, we no, didn't have that yet. No, that, no. It was before that. Yeah. Don't ask, don't tell didn't him until I got out. Oh, so Clinton wow. came in. Yeah. yeah, Clinton started that yeah. Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Yeah. Right? I got out in 2003. No. I got out in 2003. Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Probably about 2000, maybe. 2000. It wasn't very long. 
Yeah. You mean when it was approved that right. it's okay to be gay? Yeah. Yeah, I no, was saying the It's initial. never okay. Just yeah. don't ask and we, we won't, won't tell. tell. Yeah. Don't ask, that's don't tell. Don't ask, but that started with Reagan. <laughs> Oh, no. No, no. It was Clinton oh, who started no. that. Reagan is a Republican who, you know, so the, that would never. He's like, we don't so want to talk Clint, about it. Clinton, I yeah. think it was Clinton who said, we won't ask and you don't and tell. You don't tell. Yeah. Gotcha. And and don't act it and don't do nothing stupid yeah. and don't get caught. Because when I came through. Oh, they used to do the um, dorm raids. They oh, yeah. We had dorm raids. At, at 3 o'clock in the morning. And, and they then, called it the witch hunts. Yeah. And they I called had them a lot. the witch hunts. Oh, yeah. The witch hunts. And we had a, a lot of my friends got put out just because someone said. That they were gay. Wow. And there was no, you don't have to prove it. How are you going to prove you not? You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, yeah. So it was, it was just like that. You just could not get caught. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm not saying that people did. used to go, because I got stationed in, I was at the Pentagon. That, that's what I want to bring up next. Yeah, I was First stationed at the station. Pentagon. And uh, we would go out to tracks. It was like one of the, uh, that was the club to go to if you yeah. were gay. And, you know, you couldn't drive your vehicle because your vehicle would have the um Place. the military yeah. um, stickers Tax. on them. And yeah. OSI would come out and they'd go around the parking lot. Right. And they would get, you know, the number. And then, you know, if you go back you, to the they call you in and, you know, everybody's live was, oh, I left that to a friend of mine. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but they were always out looking. So you had to kind of like lead a double life. And it didn't had, matter it, how good you were with your job. Yeah, it, it didn't, didn't matter. matter how proficient, yeah. how efficient. They did two I mean, things. They did yeah, either they, did. they tried to abuse the system because they knew some right. of the males, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or they right. just were very hateful and just wanted to ruin your career and, and get you out of there. Yeah, so because you, had to you, be weren't, very, you weren't available to them. Or they just hated you because oh, they you just were gay. Hated so you, you had two sets of because. people. And they weren't all males. There was, you know, you also had females right. who were just straight up hateful. They yeah. thought you were gay. You didn't even be in the military. And if they were supervising, they made you like miserable. So you yeah. had to you had to somehow walk a very thin Fine line. line. You pretty much had it was a double life. Yeah, you had pretty much a double life. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, uh, so your first duty station was Pentagon. The Pentagon. Yeah. And your first duty station was what? Korea. And you were in what branch? Air Force. Okay. Of course, Army. Well, I know. Well, we're going go to go to Korea. Everyone knows what be all you can be. <laughs> really um, meant. Really meant. <laughs> you went straight to Korea. We're going to, you so, come in. So when and... I saw be all, all that you could be, all I saw is people running around with guns and stuff like that. I was like, ew. Yeah. You know? And yeah. the Air Force, you know, you see the planes, you know, and everybody's flying. And, or in an office. And nobody's sweating. Everybody looks good. I was like, yeah, that's that's that, where I'm that, going. That sounds nice. Mm-hmm. And and when you came in, were you already your, how do you say, uh, your your MOS would be for the Army, but what would they call it for the Air Force? Would you, like your your, 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 your savings, your yeah. job. Yeah. See, for us, it's military occupational savings. It's, it's, it's the like same. That. It's the same it's for MLS. us. Um, but they just had a different name. But for I the can't Navy, remember. it was a rating. No, we had you had a. Um, it, it was a. It was not MOS. It was called something else. Yeah. Um, but I was an electromagnetic. <laughs> he was a geek. <laughs> Specialist. specialist. Electromagnetic yeah. specialist. Specialist. What happened? That's what, what happened. And what was yours? It was a nice, it was a nice fancy name for calm troop. Yeah. Mine was a environmental science specialist. Yeah. Got you. Got you. And then you. I was in preventive medicine. Preventive medicine. Yeah. STDs and all that. Oh. oh. I. <laughs> oh. She so, didn't prevent no. anybody. Look, so that was your specialty? They, look, look, they didn't prevent anybody from getting it. They just no. treated them. We just, we just <laughs> told them about it. No, yeah. you got it. You got it. Now take this medicine. Yep. No, and wait, wait. We got to rod you first. Oh, yeah. That's right. I think I saw about 2,000 of them, 2,000 peckers while I was in Korea. The whole thing about environmental science and preventive medicine is air, water, food, yeah. um, health inspectors. everything, uh, health, yeah. industrial. Anything that had to do with the environment, we tried to alert you about. We inspected, we surveyed, we don't, whatever. And if it's something was out there, we just wouldn't let our soldiers go in that gotcha. environment. So yeah. that's how we prevented um, people from getting sick. Yeah. Gotcha, and that was gotcha. the main thing. Education, mostly. So um, while you're in Korea, is this when I'm made? No. No. Not the first time. Second time? Yeah, I had two tours before. Okay. Okay, so what happened in between that? Because I know, like, there, there, there's a time. lot of fun. 
<laughs> well, let me see. I, I traveled went, I mean, a lot. I went from Pentagon to Spain, and then they sent me back to D.C. I couldn't get away from D.C. for the life of me. I was yeah. at Brandywine, and then I went mm. um, overseas on the... Um, Germany and Korea, and then that's when we in met. Colorado, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then, I met you guys in Germany, yeah, the second time. No, no, first time. I oh, stayed two tours. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then no, I did Korea. Then I went to hit came in Texas, San Antonio, uh, to a unit here, and had a really good time then. And uh, and then my third tour was Korea again, Second Infantry. That. During my second tour, that's when I met your biological mom. Got you. And, and as, my, at the end of my second tour. And that's when and then she, I went to Korea. And then that's we when were she both was like, I want a kid. Well, no, we, we ended up both in Korea at the same time, um, which was really odd because that was really odd that that happened. But y'all also ended up back at Fort Hood. Back at Fort I wasn't supposed to be coming back to Fort Hood. I was going to Fort Drum, New York, upstate, up in... Um, like 10 miles from Canada. Mm -hmm. But the um, the assignment was for someone with a different specialty. And when they found out that I didn't have the specialty, they reassigned me and I ended up in Fort Hood. Gotcha. So which was then now we're all three in Fort Hood. And that's where I'm born. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. 1985. Mm -hmm. All the way live. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's that. Okay, that's it. So you are a real hood rat for hood yeah. rat. It seems like it. Watch out now. I'm coming out here, craft beer and all. Watch drink my up, drink wa up. Watch my pinky. Here, here. It's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, you were born on, at Fort Hood. All right, so I want I want to flash forward through the locations y'all were stationed to retirement. Okay. So from 1985 to retirement. Okay. You said... Now I was at Brandywine. You, cool. Brandywine. Maryland. Then, Maryland. Yeah. And then, then I went to... Um, I don't know where I went from there. Where did I go? I think I went to Korea. You went to Korea too? Mm-hmm. And then I went to Barksdale, Louisiana. Ooh. Yeah. Barksdale. Um, where they had a sign up on one of the highways coming in for some coon-ass cuisine. Coon-ass cuisine. I was like, oh, I'm definitely not going to be outside Great. after dark down here. <laughs> Great marketing. <laughs> no matter how light-skinned uh, you uh, are. No, 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 no. <laughs> I always made sure I was at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I think that's when I went to Germany. Okay. Yeah. And then from Germany, I went to the Air Force Academy. And then I went to Scott. And that Air Force and Academy in Colorado. Colorado, 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 Colorado Springs. And then Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. I yeah. saw St. Louis. Yep, that's when we lived together. Yeah, yes. And then... Bow, bow. Bow, bow. And then I uh, retired and came here, Texas. And how many years was that? Mm. From 85 to... Oh, no, no, no. Just your entire Total. tour. What do you mean? For did, Scott? Did, your, your entire Air Force. Oh, 21.5. Woo! Okay. She loved them decimals. <laughs> Hey, I want my point five. No, no, you earned your point, point five. Four. You earned your point. <laughs> point two, three, hey, seven, point, six. Sixty nine yep. point seven average. That, that points get you over the hump, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you would have had a D, but you had sixty nine point seven. Hey, that's some so crap. That's a C. You passed. Yeah. Congratulations. Then, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And then after Fort Hood, you went to. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, I went. My whole tour went like Korea. Fort Sam, I went Korea, we Jambu, and one of my favorite. Okay, I gotta tell you this story, right? Because when I got my orders to go to Korea, my very first set of orders, yeah, they took. I was one of the last people where they get my orders, so just to get my orders, and I'm like, what's going on, right? When they got my orders in, they said, I said, well, where am I going? They said, Korea. You're going to we Jambu. And I'm like, Wee Jambu, MASH is over. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I going to Wee Jambu? MASH is over. MASH is over because I love that shit. <laughs> I said, MASH is over. And they looked at me like I was totally stupid. But I'm like, and then, and anyway, at any rate, I ended up in Wee Jambu. So then it was Korea, uh, Fort Sam Houston, Texas, back to Korea, back to Fort Hood, Texas, and clean. And then from there, I went to Egypt. And from Egypt, oh, choose. Where did I go from Egypt? You saw, you, you did everything uh, in Egypt? Oh, I, uh, from from yeah, Egypt, I became a drill Pyramid, sergeant. Sphinx, the oh, whole yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did the whole works, the burning bush. I did everything I 
almost got saved because I saw Jesus. You almost got <laughs> like, shot. You almost, almost got, got shot in the Gaza Strip, too. Oh, yeah. Well, that was my bad. Because <laughs> I was going to be a journalist, and I still had the journalistic instinct, and I wanted to document all kinds of stuff. Whatever y'all do, don't ever take a picture at the Gaza Strip. You will get taken in. Anyway, um, after Egypt, I became a drill sergeant. That's right. And then after that, you were where? I went... Uh, I was at Fort Jackson for a little bit, and then they started the drill sergeant program here um, in Texas. So at they Bamsley? moved me right. No, at Fort at Fort Sam. Fort Sam Houston. Yeah, and then I they moved me from Jackson to here to start up this program, and then from there I went to Germany. No, I became an instructor at the camp, and then I went to Germany, and that's where I met Kim for the second time. Oh <laughs> snap! Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, 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 there we go. There we go. And yeah, and uh, we just dragged you along. I just dragged you along wherever I could. I'm going to be honest. I uh, I appreciate flying. It's a beautiful thing to do, especially yeah. as a kid. Look. Uh, you just uh, love traveling is, uh, now. This is your pilot speaking. I'm mm-hmm. just uh, saying this is the most beautiful thing you can do is travel as much as you can. You should join. Uh, you, you, should, you should work for Southwest with that voice. Well. <laughs> I might do a commercial work <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and so we went from Germany. That's where every uh, everything started. Then we split up. St. Louis. I stayed with Kim. You went to I Korea. I went back to Korea. My now I'm on my my nineteenth year in the military. Nineteenth, and then you got stationed in San Antonio back, again. Yeah. Yes. And this is I, I'm like Kim, final destination. The yeah. final destination. And Kim, after you came down. Right, in two thousand three. So, so y'all basically created your homestead here in San Antonio, Texas. Yes. Military City USA. Military City USA. And it wasn't just y'all, a lot of friends. Oh yeah. Everybody's saying co- yeah. the cost of living is so um affordable. Once you retire. And medical. And mm-hmm. you got all the medical um, supports you need because, you yeah. know, people who get out of the military are broke up. They broke. Yeah. They broke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially, I don't know about, I don't know too many Air Force people that are broke. Oh, but oh I, here we go. Here we go. We, we fall uh, off the I, ramp I, at I, the airport is it? just as well as anybody else. <laughs> My hip. But like she, like she, no, 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 like she so eloquently said the um the army commercial everybody's all dirty running around <laughs> weapons sniping yeah. them, getting bumped in the head uh yeah uh, yeah we were uh, oh and i went to bosnia too right we forgot oh, that yeah, we, we went to bosnia went to, yeah, yeah we, why we forgot. forgot we went to bosnia yeah, we yeah, oh, oh, yeah. oh my bad i forgot i went to bosnia yeah, yeah. We, so it was nato like, had a whole thing going they on sure there was did. a war yeah. 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 kosovo the, the little war you know that czechoslovakia happened. now yeah so Czech it's kind of funny because what's going on right now um <laughs> it's just like bosnia all over again it's yeah. the same worse. thing it's way it's worse way though. worse yeah it, yeah at least they had a truce when it came to bosnia but yeah this is this yeah is, yeah we deployed um it's funny with the uh i4 yeah and um i went to bosnia tusla and the blue factory yeah. and then kim you ended up in sarajevo yeah i went to sarajevo yeah and um yeah that was rough yeah, that was rough. But and then we so, went to Naples. Remember, I got to go yeah. to Naples. I remember Naples. <laughs> remember Naples? We, we went to Mount Vesuvius. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, we and like, walked through Pompeii. Air Force got the best places uh, to go to. Oh, yeah. I mean, them and the Navy. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Navy has some <laughs> nice places. But yeah, we went to Naples. That was yeah. fun. No, that, that, so, okay. So y'all did y'all time. You did 21 and a half. Mm-hmm. You did how many? Uh, I want to say almost 25. Almost 25 years, retired. Four point something. Yeah. Retired. Right. S- San Antonio and decided I'm not done with the government. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of funny you say that because during that whole time we both got our degrees. Yes, I went mm. back to college. Tell me, tell me I got, about this. I got my degrees, got a couple of them, networking, you know, I communications, you know, computer science, you know, just because it. Uh, so and you the, got three or four? Yeah, and so in the in the military, you know, it it, it becomes like a um, competition. You just, how many so degrees what, what did you have? have? And how and who paid for them? Was yeah, it the military? Yeah. Did they pay for? Them? Did you get TA? Did you get tuition that's, assistance? Yeah. Did, that's the yeah, win. Yeah, and that's that was the, the thing. So we had people getting PhDs just for the hell of it. Yep. Right. You know, never used them. They just yep. got them because yep. the military was paying for them. So yep. it's like, well, I've always wanted to be a doctor. 
So I never went that far because I never wanted to write that much. No worries. No worries. <laughs> yeah. So. And then you, you have you definitely have four. I got uh, one, two masters and two bachelors. I yeah. think. Nice. Yeah. Well, it when I when I, I stayed in the military that long because I wanted to finish my masters and I wanted obviously tuition assistance and let the government pay for it. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Why not? Right? Yeah. Exactly. And then I wanted that's to have all the young people now. Yeah, honestly, that's how I got my master's. Oh, yeah, exactly. definitely. No, so, I don't have mine, and I'm not going to get it. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> but but I wanted to do, I wanted to use my GI Bill for something fun. Yeah. I didn't want to use my GI Bill for... In fact, I, I started clinical informatics, and after one semester of that, I said, hell no. Clinical right. informatics. Oh uh, yeah, see, it even sounds boring, don't it? It, it does. Is. And and really nerdy. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a metrics. lot of statistics, yeah. a lot of metrics, a mm-hmm. lot of uh, data gathering. Anyway, so I got that into that, and I'm like, I hate this. I really do, and I'm I'm gonna get out of. It. And I went to UT Health for that, and I just got uh, didn't like it at all. So I said, nope, I'm going to use my GI Bill for something that I wanted to do in all my life and I never could, which was to be a, a fo- I wanted to be a photojournalist. Mm-hmm. And my dream was to work for National Geographic. This is what I wanted to do when I was 10. You still can. And, well, that's why I went to, back to school and I went and got my Bachelor's of, uh, bachelor's of Arts mm-hmm. in Digital Photography. Oh my goodness, watch out. Using my GI Bill and letting them pay me. Hey, hey. <laughs> and the, only, yeah. the only wrong way is to not do it. Yeah. You know how many people join the military and never, ever use the GI Bill? A lot. Crazy. Never. Crazy. A lot. They they just lose it. And, it, you know, when you and I came, when you, well, actually, when all three of us were in our GI Bill, it had a shelf life. It had it a did, time yeah. limit. Mm-hmm. I don't think now they do. I think now they did the forever GI Bill, which is really cool for people. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, That's what, yeah. mine, it was going to expire. So I'm like, oh, I got to do something quick. And so while we worked, mm-hmm. while we were full time mm-hmm. working, the civilian retiree, retiree employees for the we government, we went to school. <laughs> yep. And then, and it drives me nuts when people say, well, I can't do that because I don't have time. You know what? What you don't have is motivation. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's Ooh, just the yeah. way it is. It is a prior, it is a prior. And you know what? And, and, and these days, it's a lot easier because you can just about God. take any course online, virtually. Online. You know, virtually. I mean, you could get up in the middle of the night at three o'clock after the, you had eight hours of sleep because you had to work during the day and take a class, but... There's literally a American military yeah. university yeah. for yeah. veterans yeah. to, or military personnel, yeah. period, yeah. You to, should. Go, mm-hmm. to go and yeah. utilize that mm-hmm. program yeah. to go ahead and at least get a footing yeah. moving forward. No, I mm-hmm. uh, honestly, because of y'all, that's oh, yeah. why I continued school. It's, th- it's important to us. Education and it gives you a step up. It does. It People does. don't understand. It does give you a step up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely mm-hmm. say, uh, and, and aside from everyone else and how the world views it, it's no greater confidence for me than getting my producing masters from the number one film school in the world, AFI. Let's hear it out. It's fantastic. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. And um, no, it's <laughs> got to pat yourself on the back sometimes. Um, but no, seriously, like yeah. mm-hmm. uh, even if you don't need it, you have it. No you one know, can ever even take if your you education. Don't use from it. You. So that's why I always say a long time ago, you go break down that equipment, I want you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always say there's there's so many discriminators. I used to be the equal opportunity officer for I mean um, NCO for general schoolmaker. And I learned during that time and in that school, equal opportunity schools, when I, that the greatest that I mean you could People are going to discriminate against you for so many things. You're too tall. You're too short. You're black. You're white. You're Puerto Rican. You're Latin. You're whatever the case may be. And oh, by the way, now, oh, we don't like athletes. We don't like nerds. We don't, I mean, all this, there's always something to discriminate against you. But the greatest discriminator is really education. And nobody can take your education away from that's you once fact. you have it. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. You know, that's so that's why I we we push education so hard no, because without it, really, you just another Joe Schmo on on the street. Yeah, 
I want I want I want to uh I want to flash forward a little bit. Mm. Uh, because now both of y'all are coming up on retirement number two. Number Woo! two. Number yes, two. Number somebody. two. Number two. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So um now that you have your 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 photo degree mm-hmm. and and Kim, you you've do- you've dove into a whole nother realm of 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 tech and understanding oh, yeah. How markets are working, and you know, like I'm, I'm super curious, just how y'all are deriving the next stage of y'all's life, you know, and plans for the future, and how y'all are ready. It's almost like um, a butterfly shedding a cocoon. It is, you know, it, y'all are moving on to the next stage where y'all almost. It's like, oh, I'm done with people. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! I'm ready. For and that's I wish I could honestly do. say that and be done with people, but we can't. We gotta travel. We gotta travel. Yeah. You know, we don't have no bills. You know, we just gotta travel yeah. and just try to not feel responsible for everybody else's life like we had for the last twenty years. Yeah. yeah. You know, because yeah. that's what happens. You become, you know, you feel guilty because you don't. In my in my case, yeah. in my case, I always feel like. Well, you know, even though I struggled and I did it um, and I made it, in my opinion, I think I made it. Uh, I Like you say, we don't have bills. We don't struggle financially. We don't. The home is paid off. So it's like, but when you see someone else struggling, it's yeah. almost like you come. You make it your own. It's, you it's take like, it on and it's not, it's you not gotta, right. I and mean, you got to teach yourself not to do that. You got to teach yeah, yourself moving to, forward. To, to help a little and then move on and, and keep on going with your life. You know? yeah. And that's the hardest thing for us. And we're learning how to do it. We're getting yeah. better at it. No, that's and, um, beautiful. Two years yeah, we'll be we retired learn. and hopefully yeah. we'll have it down by then so that we can just get in Leave that, little, and not get that worry. little trailer van and just drive around the U.S. Yeah. or fly and go off somewhere and, and just not have to worry about anything. Yeah, no, no. But like, seriously, thank you for sharing the fact that y'all are still in growth. Because mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. of times you got the youth today, they they see you guys and they're like, oh, they got it all figured out. And it's mm-hmm. like no one ever has it all figured out. It's a constant mm-hmm. It's a constant breath that you have to continue taking to go ahead and figure out where you're going to end up. You know, the worst part about it is, is um, they, they, I don't think that the youth really sees it that we got it figured out. How do you I, see it? How do you I, feel I they see it? I think that if you try to give someone advice, unsolicited or unsolicited either way, and you, tr- you see someone struggling, you're trying because we've been there. Mm-hmm. we've been there, got the t-shirt, you know, we've been there. We know what struggle is. I know what it's like to not have food. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like to not eat for two, three days. So all this stuff, we know what the struggle is and the struggle is real and I get it. But also there is a way to get yourself out of the hole. There is a way to not mm-hmm. dig yourself any deeper. And when you got somebody like us trying to help you out and giving you advice, don't look at us like we're trying to be- on, Run your life. Like run your life. <laughs> Or when Mrs. Know It All, yeah. or oh, know, here you go again. Oh, As the teenagers, again, the teenagers know? are like, oh, here we go again. Oh, they're I'm gonna like, talk oh, to us okay. down, or we're mm-hmm. talking down to you. No, we're trying to lift you up so you can get yourself out of the hole and not need anybody to help to exactly. get you out right. the hole. Be but independent, no, yeah. Be independent. Yeah. Learn how to make some money. You don't have to be. You know, I mean, there are so many opportunities right now, and the crazy part is whenever we drive somewhere. They are always hiring everywhere. People are just so, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Oh, I'm not doing this. I mean, are you kidding me? You know what? I have a, ph- I have a <laughs> philosophy. My philosophy is some oatmeal is better than no oatmeal. If we had to share a bowl of oatmeal in my whole family and all six of us, it's almost like the crudes. But we <laughs> I mean, a little bit of something at, is at, better than nothing at, at all. Basically, at the end of the day, opportunity comes in all shapes and sizes. Mm-hmm. It's you up to recognize you. It, yeah. You know, and it, it, it's it's literally stepping back from the pride. Right. That, that Ego it's, will it's, destroy it's you. not good for you, but like give yourself an opportunity and you might find a new way. Well, certain constants that are not going to change with the 
with the human condition. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to always need to feel safe. You're going to always need to eat. You're going to always crave love. You're going to, these things are never going to change, you know. So you got to learn how to get what you need mm -hmm. on your own. Because 100%. what we have now and what I see with a lot of the, the just not all of them, of course, you got some kids that are out there that really, they're really shining. They are shining. They're, but on mm -hmm. average, everybody is, is pouting and being given everything that they think they need. And we, and we and got the an things, information and, overload. And the things that they're oh, being yeah, given exactly. are not building them to be independent, to yeah. have integrity, to be, to be able to stand on their own and be resilient. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you give them headsets, you give them iPhones, you give them all this other stuff, you, you know, give, but give, give. they can't think they... You know, they don't understand Critical why they're so angry. Is missing. You know, they yeah. don't understand why they're being dumped by every boyfriend or every girlfriend. And, you yeah. know, so all the things that really matter, they're not getting. They're yeah. getting all these superficial things, and then they think they're independent until you stop giving it to them. Yeah. And, and then it's like, apart. then they want to shoot you with an AR-15. Because, yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> they're discontent. Ooh. Yeah, because yeah. they're discontent. Yeah. You know, and you didn't make my dream come true. You stopped making my dream come true, so I'm going to, you know, take you out because I'm yeah. mad. You know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's a different world today. Yeah, it, is, it is. It is. Um, it was a lot simpler before, you know. We had mm -hmm. all this, like you said, information overload. Yeah. Yeah. All um, this access to and access the good to and the bad. That's the whole thing, you know. You know it's, yeah. I mean, the worst thing we had was the Playboy under your big brother's Thank bed. You. And, yeah. you know? It was under my pillow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, <laughs> and, 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 since you, and since you didn't read the articles, you I know, all you got article. was a little bit of skin and that was it. Yeah. You know, but now they turn on their phones. They see every, every, every device and everything at 10. Even you when know? you try to lock down that phone, yeah. they know how to unlock it. Oh, cool. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So yeah they that's got their a, job. Yeah. So they got a different mindset. And, you know, we old school. Mm. We, we try to teach things the old school way. We try to get up to date, you know. But, you know, but mm. it's hard reaching them. They got totally different brain patterns. Yeah. You know, totally different motivations that you. We, we can't can't deal with. You know, we can't even understand most of the time. Yeah. I mean, I watched Euphoria and I had to cut it off. I was like, is this, what, is this what teenagers are going through? That's adult stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. How and can, they can't talk to and, adults and, about it. And then the adults trying to talk to them like they're nine and 10. Yep. And they already 20 and 25. Right. Yep. Like, Right. They already undid that. And I'm all hooking up with you. They look at you like, oh, yeah. God, you're so stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, Mom, you really know. Like, oh, no. When you, and you say, yeah, I was watching you for, oh, I saw the whole series. Did yeah. you see this series? I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. 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 So, anywho, that's anywho. that's how, that's yeah. our so we new trying thing. To, trying to... And we're trying to step out. No, y'all, mm -hmm. I think y'all are doing great. Yeah. I know it's, it's more pulling back, and that's the hard thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, we're pulling back. Yeah. And, pulling back. You know, because y'all, y'all, y'all have done stepped, two stepped, three stepped, and four, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. now like, but I really applaud you both. Let me hear it. Yeah, we want to hear it again. I'm not done. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you conditioned us. You conditioned us. I'm so sorry. I applaud you both. I applaud you both on the steps you are taking for you individually oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. for your yeah. own growth. And I am curious if there's. If there's one statement that you could share to those who are listening, who may be walking in the same footsteps, similar lifestyles, similar um, backgrounds, what would you say um, for that individual that is listening to you? What's some words of advice? I always say you can slow down, but you never quit. And ignorance is no excuse. because Even though it's bliss? Well, no, ignorance is. is bliss because you're out there just floundering, you know, you don't you know don't what's know going. As long as you yeah. don't know, you think it's bliss, but the whole world is passing you by. Yeah. Um, so, no, if you don't know something, look it up. Reach out. If I mean, find something, find what your passion is and go with it. Because the minute that your passion and your motivation aligns, you're unstoppable. You can do anything as long as you stay on top of it. Brr, 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 brr. Hey, Kim. Wow. I don't know how to follow that up. <laughs> I, 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 I think you got your... I don't have anything. I think you got your... You have so eloquently that. put. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously. You you know, 
if you're out there, you just got to understand yourself and mm -hmm. put yourself in a position to be happy. And knowing oneself leads to happiness. When you don't know yourself, you find yourself doing things for other people, that other people want you to time. do, and you're just doing it out of obligation and duty, mm -hmm. and it's bringing you no joy. You got the wrong job, but you don't want to quit because you're making good money, so you stay miserable instead of going out and taking the risk and doing that thing that you really want to do. Called living right. life. You know, exactly. And you got to yeah. live now, and you can't wait to live. It's not guaranteed. You get, we, you we gotta get live, the breath we have. You got to live while you're living. You know, so and that don't means, be afraid. You know, yeah. fear, fear, fear will, will incapacitate yeah. you. Yeah. It will incapacitate but, you. but don't let your ego rule your world either, because yeah. the rule will. I mean, ego will destroy you. Yeah. It's a lot of things, but yeah. you you really it's have all about to learn. Balance. It's, it's right. about balance. It's about Everything balance. is about balance and exactly. learning how to live while you're working, live yeah. while you're doing your education, and live. Take the little moments. It don't have to be expensive. It could be local, but just get out and do something that makes you happy. Yeah, right. you know. Um, whatever that is, you know, yeah. for me, I go out in the backyard on on Sunday mornings. And it's like that first four hours is mine. Don't bother me. Yeah. I can't grow anything, but I'm trying to help. <laughs> I got 50, <laughs> I done bought 50 million books. And every now and then I get a pepper, a pepper, one three. pepper, <laughs> maybe a tomato. I might get one tomato oh, yeah. and I'm ecstatic, you know, I feed yeah. my, I feed those my, are yours. Yeah. They, these are mine. And I found yeah. it and I'm not going to let anybody take it away. So, yeah. I dig it. And that's it. You know, live life now. Live while you live living. Learn totally, to live happily while you live it. I totally dig it. Well, ladies, this was beyond tooth pulling to get y'all to do this. <laughs> but um, thank you. And I, I'm glad it wasn't too threatening for you. And through all the stuff we've all been through, I know we didn't tap too much. We can always have more mm -hmm. in the future. Y'all know I'm writing the script. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it's called The Soldier's Son. Watch out. This is going to be about them mm -hmm. raising a young man mm -hmm. while serving in the military with a bunch of lesbian women. Look out for it. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to go ahead and give a shout out real quick for any personal things y'all have working out. Um, I know you have, what's it called? One? One in the middle photography. Oh. And I am, uh, yeah, I already started it and that's what I'm going to do. In a couple of years, when I retire from my W-2 job, I am going to, and W-2 means I work, for, yeah, I work. Also, <laughs> also, I pay taxes. She works for the man. But <laughs> also, I, you have an active business right now that I people do. can hire you to do Correct. all types of what? Photography. I do mm. uh, portraits and events, weddings. Okay. Cool. Baby they can showers. also find oh, you. Oh, baby showers, but I don't do babies. Can't, can't they find you in certain publications? Uh, no, I don't think so. Are I'm you online. sure? Because I website. you show me a publication that had your photos. Oh, because I do cosplay, and that was a long. It time seems ago, like but... photos. It seems like a publication. What <laughs> was publication a, was it? Yes, I don't know if they even exist. It was a cosplayers magazine. Everything exists. Okay, <laughs> online. <laughs> Everything. Exists. Anywho, yeah, one in, one but that's what we're photography. gonna do. Yeah. One yeah. Yeah. And um, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a van. Mm -hmm. I want. I am dying to get one of those travel vans. You know that has everything in it and just hit every state. Yes. And, and and you're bringing all your scuba gear, right, Kim? Well, I will be trying to find places to get wet. Yes. <laughs> As I drop her off for her business meetings, I will be finding. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. To get in the water. <laughs> sorry. No, 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 no. no, no. It's us, it's you us. do you. <laughs> you yeah. No, we just got to travel. And the thing about it is we won't have to come back home. We can just stay a month. You know, mm -hmm. I want to spend three months on in San Diego. So I'm yeah. just going to get an air, oh, not an air, but just rent a place for six, yeah. three to six months. And I want to go to Santa Fe. And stay there and just, just. Do everything that I can possibly do there until I get tired of the Pacific Ocean and then move on. I, I hear that. Yeah, I so. hear that. Well, that's the great thing. Well, ladies, thank you for making me who I am today. Yeah. Uh, I hope I haven't disappointed y'all too much. This is the time that you go ahead and say something oh, nice. Oh, you're wonderful. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> well, John, you know, you were challenging. You were challenging, uh, but you turned out. But that's because. The past the is reason, the past. No, the reason you were challenging is because you're creative. And creatives, yeah. Yeah. you know, they're different. They're not motivated by the same things the as some, the standard 
right. person, the standard kid, you know, yeah. sports and their typical, hobby and yeah. whatever is good enough for them. But no, you have to be out there running things, making things happen, trying and failing and trying and failing and being optimistic about it. So yeah. you were different. And uh, that's why you are where you are. All I hope is I make y'all proud. So oh, yes. thanks. Thanks, yes. ladies. I want to do one final shout out to uh, my Deep can. Alum <laughs> Brewing Company. It was good. Golden Balanced <laughs> Session Ale. Uh, I'm going to mm. pop one more just for y'all. Thank you. Stay tuned. We have more to come. This is out here in San Antonio. Your boy, Jai, with Beer with Friends. Talk to you next time.